Many financial crimes or other white-collar crimes typically involve the stealing of data to empty bank accounts and fish out money, however in small amounts. Although these crimes are typically planned, the victim can be targeted or random. Whoever gets into the trap of these criminals becomes the victim. All effort is gone into fooling the target. Such crimes are serious. They do impact society and their values. In addition, these crimes are conducted on small and large scales with rather more unprofessional scam artists taking part in it. The world is filled with individuals willing to take advantage of others and institutions. Join us on The Fraud Files as we dive into the world of financial crime. Let's dive into the world of bank fraud. We join the FBI on the trail of Christopher A. Montalbano, a resident of Birmingham, Alabama who conspired with his father, Gus Montalbano, 77, to defraud multiple banking and financial institutions in terms of acquiring loans. In this video, we will be looking at how the duo managed to conduct such a crime and how they gained from it. So watch this video till the end in order to get the full details about the father and son who committed bank fraud. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to become part of our channel and click the bell icon to stay tuned. Without further ado, let's begin. Christopher A. Montalbano, a citizen in the United States, successfully scammed and acquired a huge amount of loans from over 140 banking institutions in multiple states, including Alabama. He provided false documents and fraudulent information through shell corporations, which managed to satisfy the banking requirements as he applied for the loan against his personal name under these shell companies. His preparations to fool the bank were adequate and accurate as he made a website to further facilitate his fraud by posting fake photographs of work being done on sites by his company. All this false supporting information acted as proof of the fake validity of Montalbano's application. He successfully fooled many banks into believing his work was real and that his company was actually operating. It was later discovered, to everyone's surprise, when the investigation and reports came to light that the photos published on the website were from real equipment and machinery owners which he portrayed to be part of his shell company. His company, Landwork Tractor and Equipment, was the company on behalf of which all this false information was submitted to the bank, and after successful review of his documents and bank loan processing, Montalbano successfully and with ease acquired a huge sum of loans from hundreds of FDIC-insured financial institutions. The sums he acquired played an integral role in the extravagant lifestyle he espoused immediately. His lifestyle included expensive high-end vehicles, farmlands, lake houses, properties, private jets, personal assistants, and all sorts of other luxury people today can only dream of. Montalbano was accompanied by his father, the 77-year-old man who benefited from all this. It is of no doubt that a great deal of planning and backup information was required for the success of this scam that they pulled off with pinpoint accuracy. They went on to lengths so dangerous that they were playing with fire. His luxurious life was certainly exemplary. However, not for long. Little did he know was that sooner or later, justice would strike him and compel him to stand in the courts and be accountable for his wrongdoings. Finally, justice was served, and accountability reared its face when, in November 2021, he was charged with providing fraudulent information to financial institutions insured by Federal Deposit Insurance Company, FDIC, in order to acquire loans. Legal proceedings were initiated by several agencies and the victims themselves against Chris Montalbano and his father Gus Montalbano. As mentioned earlier, fraudulent information was submitted by them for their company's fake operations, land work, tractor, and equipment, which was initially located in Florida and later relocated to Alabama. Montalbano purchased adjoining properties totaling 150 acres in Vincent, Alabama, which was used at the address for his fake company. He fenced the property off thus cutting off the ability to inspect the property, further limiting the banking institution's ability to verify loan information. Furthermore, Montalbano already had a notorious record of already scamming 20 other financial institutions. By the end of his crime spree, he and his father had targeted 140 FDIC-insured financial institutions. When legal action was taken against him, multiple agencies, such as the FBI, and other institutions provided sufficient and valid evidence against him and his father. His father was held accountable for accompanying him in the execution of the crimes, to a lesser degree. 
Courts had charged Montalbano with bank fraud as he provided fraudulent information to the institutions to acquire loans. He was later sentenced to 180 months of prison, along with a fine imposed of roughly $11 million. 180 months might seem little, but Chris Montalbano will be spending the next 15 years in prison. By the time Chris Montalbano is released from prison, he will be 53 years old, trying to start a life with felonies tied to him. One can only hope he has learned his lesson. A further consequence of his actions revolves around his father, who is already 77. He might not even be alive in the next 15 years. Chris has wasted valuable time with his family and his father. The father and son duo committed some very wrong deeds. According to officials, the victims have incurred multi-million dollar losses, causing major setbacks. The loss isn't just a loss to the victim, but considering it's a bank, all the public and other companies associated with the particular bank would suffer too, considering the bank is under serious trouble for this loss. More than likely, the financial institutions have insurance, which will compensate them for their loss. However, by the time they are compensated, significant damages have already been suffered by the banks. Montalbano and his father committed these acts in pure greed of money and an extravagant, luxurious life. Imagine if they used all this knowledge and planning to put in the same effort into creating a legitimate business startup or another venture. They might have made significant progress. You know what they say is true, all is well that ends well. And from the example of Montalbano, no one can question the fact that all that is bad ends bad also. Now we close another fraud file regarding the father and son bank fraud duo. Remember, if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe to our channel and smash that like button. Stay tuned to our channel for amazing videos like this one by clicking the bell icon. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comment section below about this event. We'll see you in another fraud file soon. Until then, cheers.